Tonight, I'm showing you my design of a Lego storage table. With a house of four boys, we have a lot of Lego bricks. We started with the big bins under the bed, but when those got full and Lego creations were everywhere, I decided it's time to build a Lego table. Now, part of the reason why I built this is so that we could actually organize the bricks into colors and be able to find the pieces we're looking for instead of just stirring it up and making a lot of noise. So this design had to include storage as well as the actual surface to play on. Let me show you what we did. I first got a few sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood and cut them down to the width I needed on the table saw with the help of my handy shop assistant. Usually I can cut most plywood down by myself, but when I'm doing a full sheet on the table saw, it's nice to have an extra set of hands. To keep the cost down and simplify the drawers, I decided to get the smaller Trofast storage bins from Ikea. This way my boys can pull out a certain color and move it to wherever they're building at the time. To hold the drawer bins, I cut dados with a dado blade on my table saw. Some of the dividers had to have dados on both sides, so they were just deep enough to hold the drawer while still leaving some material in the middle. Once they were all cut, I drilled pocket holes along the bottom to attach them to the base and top. Each divider was screwed to the base. I then test fit the drawer bins to make sure they would slide freely. If you're building this yourself and you find that your dados are not deep enough, you can always glue on another strip of wood underneath the dado to add a little bit more of a ledge for your drawer to slide on. Another one of my shop helpers helped me drill the pocket holes on the back cross braces. Once these were cut, I screwed them to the back to give some lateral support to the entire structure. One thing I did to make it easier to slide the drawers in and out was to put a small chamfer on the top and bottom of each of the drawer slide openings. The top of the table had to be sized to fit the Lego base plates exactly. Each Lego base plate is 10 inches by 10 inches, and the space I was trying to fill in the room made it so I could do a table that was two base plates by five base plates. So the tabletop was 20 inches by 50 inches. The math between the drawer sizing and the base plate sizing didn't match up exactly though. So on one end, there's a bit of an overhang, which is okay because it ends up being hidden. I trimmed out the bottom edge with a one by two to give it a cleaner look. After cutting the miters, these were glued and nailed in place. I also trimmed out the top edge, giving it a half inch lip along two edges so Legos don't roll off. The back had a taller board to keep things from rolling off the back of the table. The fourth edge though had no lip because I wanted to have a waterfall going over the side. To make sure the drawers all stopped at the same place, I ripped down a few strips of plywood and nailed them in along the back as stops for the drawers. Once everything was sanded smooth, I stained the outside to match the rest of the furniture in the room. This included a last minute decision to stain the front edges of the sides and dividers, which actually helped to distract from some of the voids in the plywood edge. Once the stain was applied, I used Armor Seal oil and urethane finish to give it a good protective coat. Next came the fun part of laying out the base plates. My kids and I decided to do a city layout with a beachfront and waterfall at one end. I attached the plates on the top using double stick tape, which gives us the option of changing them out later if they want a different layout. For the waterfall side, I used some of my thick Starbond CA glue, which I use all over in my shop for all kinds of things. If you want some, I do have a link and code below for a 15% off discount. Just for fun, I added a green board on the side too so we could have a cliff face to build something on. The last step was to bring it into the boys' room and load it up. This took some careful maneuvering, but once we got it in place, it fit perfectly. The builds on this table are always evolving over time but are a lot of fun to work on together. We've named the city Legotropolis and we have apartments, restaurants, skyscrapers, mission control, a rocket garden, toy store, and fire station along with a beautiful beach and nature area which leads to a waterfall and a sheer cliff. This cliff face happens to be the secret hideout of some of the more questionable residents of Legotropolis. But don't worry, our police force will keep them under control. 
This was a really fun project for my kids to see come together. They were involved in many steps of the process and definitely feel some ownership in the final product. I do have plans for this, so if you're interested, check out the link in the description and that'll give you the link to my website where you can get the plans. Make sure to check out my other woodworking videos, including the latest shop tour. Now go build something and we'll see you next time.